Stadium 1, der Europameister, ist also noch auf Tuchfüllung. Aber jetzt kommt noch so eine Disziplin. It's the day after challenge Kaiserwinkel Weichsee. Um, I'm back at uh, yeah, my parents' home, the house uh, where I grew up as well, um, which is only um, yeah, 20k from Weichsee, um, right over the border to Germany. So yeah, that's why Weichsee is my, is my home race. And um, I just, uh, I'm already uh, actually came here uh, three weeks before the race, um, just also because I, I love to train here, um, come back home, um, just yeah, enjoy some time uh, with my family. Um, came here with uh, Jana and uh, Kona, of course, and um, yeah, just prepared for the race. Um, was um, watching the course again multiple times, even though I actually didn't really know it, um, know it blindly. And um, yeah, then Challenge Weissi, um still went there um, into a hotel. Um, uh, yeah, Friday before the race. Um, yeah, which is so, so it's basically like even less stressful uh, because like Weissi is a really small town. Um, 
can just uh, go from there right to the swim start. It's like a, a two minute walk. And um, yeah, the organization, it was just, um, yeah, perfect again, already before the race. Um, still gonna uh, talk about that more um, after I, I took you there. Yeah, after I talk you through through my, my race and how my race went. Um, but yeah, already before the race, um, like everything went smoothly. Um, day before um, registration, check in, and the weather was also playing along nicely. Got quite warm or the day the day before, and the weather forecast um, for the for the race day uh, shouldn't be any different. Um, yeah, I was expecting a, a hot race. Um, the water temperature was um, twenty three point five degrees, um, if I remember that well. Um, the problem is that in Austria, even for pro and elite starters. The limit for uh, for non wetsuit uh, swim is twenty four point six degrees. Uh, so yeah, wetsuits were allowed, um, but the water was yeah way too warm uh, for for wetsuit for sure. Um, so the start was at, still at eight thirty in the morning. Um, so that made it kind of kind of okay, but uh, still yeah after um, after some time in the water it, it got really really warm. But yeah, just to, to talk you through my race, um, yeah, I trained really well, had a really good training block um, bef before Challenge Vicey, um, was really focused um, on that race. Um, my goal was to defend uh, my title definitely, um, despite the really, really strong field this year um, with the second place uh, of the Ironman St. Louis River Championship in St. George last year, Sam Long. Uh, coming to Europe and racing Chen uh, which is really really amazing um, in my opinion like more um, Americans should come come to Europe and, and race um, and also also the other way around uh, I assume of course uh, if it fits into my schedule uh, racing in America um, apart from this year um, I have a race day at anyways um, but yeah it's just uh, I think an amazing experience um, and uh, really cool from him that he comes here uh, the week before his big race uh, Challenge Road uh, to race Challenge Challenge Weissi and then also Florian Angert racing uh, fifth at the uh, Ironman World Champs in St. George. So yeah, that's just uh, two of two guys of a, of a really strong and competitive field. Um, probably an even stronger field than last year when it was uh, European uh, European Championship. And um, yeah, so my goal was still to defend my title because uh, I'm just super confident going into this race. Um, yeah, uh, it's my it's my home race, um, and I just know the course so well. And already racing racing there for the fourth time, got two times second, and um, won it last year at the European Championship. So. Um, yeah, I really know know how to race there, race there, know how hard it is, and know um, that it really, really suits me. And um, so yeah, swim um, started really well for me. Had a good good start into the race. Um, the first uh, yeah 500 meter until the the first boy were were quite hard. Um, just trying to to catch some good legs. Um, what I managed, um, and yeah. This time didn't have to, to lead any group. I was just uh, chilling yeah, at the legs. Uh, was more after that first boy was more or less um, yeah quite easy swim. Um, decided to stay there, save energy um, yeah, for for the for the bike and run. And um, with I knew we are still going a fast pace, so probably if I would have gone to the front, wouldn't have been uh, much faster. I'm pretty sure. Um, so yeah, it was pretty good to save some energy there. I went out of the water with a, um, I think, one and a half minute gap to the to the leader, um, which was uh, one one Swiss guy, and uh, yeah, one minute one minute gap to to Flo Flo Angert, my my teammate, and um, yeah, that was um, for sure something. Um, yeah, I, I I watched out for like how's the gap to Flo. 
uh, to the front and how is but also how is the gap uh, to the back to 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 Sam and the other strong uh, strong runners and um, yeah then I on, went on the bike um, with quite fresh legs and uh, felt really fresh because I could save really much energy in the swim and also um, had really good legs so could push uh, high high power right from the beginning um, like it's a really it's a really technical and and hilly course uh, but when I was like pushing it was always somewhere between uh, 360 and uh, 420 watts when it was going going uphill and um, this way I, I could really drop um, the other guys from my from my uh, swim group uh, really quickly and catch up to Flo um, already after yeah, 15 kilometer uh, into the race and uh, overtook him um, after the first longer longer downhill section and uh, just kept pushing and uh, yeah realized um, yeah like five minutes later that I actually dropped him and I was uh, alone in front of the race and then yeah of course that's always really motivating and um, I just kept pushing um, had a great support um, from from a lot of spectators uh, on, on the side of the road um, which is also like really really motivating and um, then just kept, kept pushing uh, like through the technical sections I was more like rolling um, pushing like high power and the, the important sections but then downhill really like trying to save save the energy um, try to roll get through the corners uh, really quick and um, yeah it's obviously uh, an advantage if you if you know the course uh, as well um, as me and um, after after one lap um, it, it is, it's a two lap course and and after one lap uh, there's a yeah one uh, turn where you can actually see the gap uh, to to the to the back to Flo Angad and uh, to also to Sam Long and yeah that was already like um, almost a four minute gap to to Sam and I think already over two minute to Flo um, yeah after just one lap on the bike and um, yeah that that was uh, really good to see um, I mean I was riding uh, hard. Um, the, f the first the first lap maybe a little too hard uh, so I actually decided uh, to yeah try uh, to, to ride a little uh, conservative um, the, the second lap of the course especially because um, the second lap we have to start uh, to overtake uh, the, the amateurs uh, starting after us and uh, it's really narrow roads and um, yeah especially in the technical sections you really just have to stay focused be careful um, yeah, not risking a crash uh, or anything and yeah rode I think my my first lap actually um, the power was I think uh, yeah almost 340 um, watts average and uh, about uh, 360 watts normalized power and uh, the second lap was um, about 20 watts less than the first lap um, but <laughs> Um, the second lap was uh, only like I think uh, 30 second slow, slower than slower than the first lap uh, so I did it well there um, could uh, I think yeah ride another uh, 30 seconds uh, faster than, than Sam on that on that second lap he actually got faster for the second lap which is quite impressive um, considering that uh, you, you really have to overtake um, a, a lot of lot of amateurs and really have to be careful there but uh, he managed to, to ride second lap faster than the first um, so yeah he actually he, he had a strong ride um, I think and uh, I think he also set it for himself and uh, then went on to the run course with a uh, um, I think uh, almost yeah, three, 345 minute gap on, on Sam and um, I think for Flo it was already um, over five minutes. Unfortunately, he had not uh, his his best day. Uh, I know Flo can do uh, stronger than that. He already showed that multiple times, but um, yeah, wasn't his strongest day yesterday, sadly. 
and um, so yeah it was a race between uh, Sam and me and uh, went into the run course didn't feel too great um, was like okay maybe I rode a little too hard uh, should have ride um, maybe a little uh, yeah easier the first lap um, it was also getting really really warm um, up to yeah up to 30 degrees and because there was uh, no no wind um, it yeah was really like the heat was standing like in, in the valley of the of the between the mountains and um, then went on the run course didn't feel great um, my yeah Sam was catching up pretty quickly um, I think the first lap he, he was actually running like one and a half minute uh, faster than me it was it's a four lap run course also um, quite quite hilly um, and he had he got he has got a, he got a, a one minute penalty for um, dismounting um, for riding over the dismount line because he didn't really know it's coming that fast um, he's like slightly downhill to the dismount line and if you don't really don't know that there's the dismount line then it's, yeah it can definitely happen that you you uh, you miss it and I think he, he said he that he almost crashed there but yeah, and even got a penalty for that for riding over the dismount line it was, the, it was a one minute penalty um, I yeah, I had a lot of fans on the on, on the side of the the course, and who were actually telling me that Sam Sam has got a penalty. So basically, the gap to him beginning of the run course was um, four forty five this way. Um, yeah, but after um, one lap, it uh, shrank down to uh, I think just like three, just over three minutes. And uh, after two laps, um, this, yeah, this lap, second lap was my, by far my my slowest lap. Um, it was only um, yeah, just over over two minutes, and yeah, I, I you know, and you're not in great places in your head when you uh, don't don't feel so good. It's really hot. Um, you're leading the race, but like completely lonely, and you know there's a a guy chasing you, running uh, so much faster than you and uh, yeah it's it's getting really really tough mentally and I was just preparing in my head for um, him to overtake me um, of course uh, the that's the worst actually you can do but because you're uh, like so on your limits um, yeah your mind is just so gets just so negative about everything um, but luckily I, I kind of found my legs kind of recovered for the second half of the run um, could just like yeah increase the cadence a little and uh, then uh, with one lap to go um, he was one minute uh, 20 I think uh, behind me and then I knew okay one minute 20 on 5k I can actually do that <laughs> uh, I should be able to do that and um, yeah I think then it was even like I could really increase my pace um, was running really fast and I was like okay if he has to, if he wants to catch me he has to run like 20 second per kilometer uh, f fast faster than me and uh, so I really tried tried to push it um, and then um, what what <laughs> There was a okay. <laughs> so um, yeah, and then I think like uh, on one place I talked with him after um, he he saw me and he knew okay it's like three k to go. Um, he's over one minute um, yeah behind me and he knew that uh, yeah it's not possible to to catch me. So I think. He decided to to save energy for his big race at Change Roth um, this week, and um, 
then yeah I was just kept pushing until the finish because I had no idea um, if he's gonna like really try until the end and then um, yeah I got from the side of the road that the gap is already like at 140 so I increased the gap again and it was like 1k to go okay, and then okay um, <laughs> it was like the last kilometer I actually know okay fine I really have that um, I can I can win that race um, until that I really had uh, only only doubts and doubts about that in my head and uh, yeah was so relieved when I um, just ran uh, to the finish uh, over the finish line um, could really defend my title against um, yeah one of the the best uh, in the world uh, on this on this distance. Um, which really yeah, proves to me that um, I am competitive with the world's best uh, on the on the seventy point three distance, and um, yeah, also proves to um, yeah to to everyone out there um, that um, I can can be there on top, and of course I, I want to uh, continue improving and show that on the on the really big races like the. Uh, PTO races and the world champs and uh, I'm optimistic that I can and um, yeah gave me a big it's a big confidence booster um, now this race and uh, yeah big congrats to, to Sam uh, Sam Long for, for second place and just thank you for uh, for racing Challenge Weissy my home race and uh, I really like I said really appreciate that and um, really nice to to get to know him uh, to get to know the guy uh, behind the, the yo 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 and uh, really nice guy uh, yeah huge respect for him and he has uh, as well and that's really that makes him really likable and really sympathetic um, great guy and yeah congrats also to to third place uh, from from Greece um, which was a uh, yeah, really young guy uh, Coming from Xterra, I think, um, yeah, his first half distance. So yeah, really great result for for that first half distance. Only like nine, I think, nineteen years old. So um, really strong. So just gonna talk you through the the data um, of the race. So the swim was actually exactly one point nine uh, kilometer, one is nine hundred meter uh, wetsuit swim, and um, we swam uh, one. Uh, 13 um, minute per hundred meter pace um, yeah I was uh, swimming on 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 legs so there it really felt uh, quite quite easy uh, so yeah 113 at the front it's definitely um, a little harder even on wetsuit and yeah as it was uh, over 23 degree water temperature it was also really really warm in wetsuit um, the bike course is a little shorter um, it's about 83 kilometer but with uh, over yeah one thousand it's 1057 meter of elevation gain i needed uh, one hour and 54 minutes um, which is a 43.2 um, kilometer per hour average um, yeah that's over yeah it's a minute faster than i rode last year and also, I think it was, uh, if I saw on Strava, it was two seconds faster than Ruben Zipunke went last year. So now I, I have the, the bike cross, bike cross record. Um, of course, it's hard to compare the, the years because there's always uh, different, different conditions. Um, my maximum speed was uh, 82.8 uh, km per hour at one of the, one of the descents. Um, my average power was uh, 300. Uh, 22 watts and um, the normalized power was 344 watts um, it's definitely not much um, for uh, the speed I want um, I think one reason is that my setup is just like crazy fast um, I definitely can't complain about that um, another reason is like my position is really good. Um, I've actually checked it before the race um, on a 15 kilometer out and back segment. Um, I needed 347 watts for a 49 
1.3 km per hour average. Um, I think this is a quite a good um, power to speed um, yeah, comparison. So yeah, I always have like not so much power for a really high speed, uh, which is definitely good. Um, I think yeah, for that race, way usually I don't really care about weight or what's per kilogram because it really doesn't matter as a triathlete. Sometimes it's better to be a little heavier so you have more energy, um, so you're yeah can you're not just killing yourself on the bike and you have more energy left for the run. Um, but here in this course, it's maybe not completely unimportant because it's really technical. A lot of um, uh, yeah turns where you have to like um, which is k killing the speed, so you have to get out of the turn and um, push out of out of the turn. A lot of up and down, so it's not just always uh, rolling hills. Um, and I think yeah, in the last uh, three weeks of training here, I might have lost. Um, yeah, probably about uh, one to two kilograms. Um, it's just always when it gets warmer um, and in the summer, I just start to look, start to drop the weight. It's just uh, yeah, totally natural for me. Uh, it's not. I'm not losing any power as long as I'm not losing any power. Um, it's also totally fine. So I actually have to really have to be careful to to eat enough to not lose too much um, when it gets warm in the summer. So it might have been good for that race to be a, a, a little lighter and that's why also my power um, yeah, is a little lower. I guess I didn't weigh myself, but uh, if I'd guess uh, it's like uh, for the race with all the carbo loading before was probably 74 kilograms. And uh, yeah, I spent um, 10 minutes over uh, 400, 10 minutes over 400 watts and yeah one hour and uh, seven minutes um, over 350 watts um, or actually then one hour 20 minutes over um, 350 watts so at threshold or higher and uh, yeah it's not it's definitely not a course for a um, power uh, pb um, because it's like yeah, stop, stop and go, lots of turns, hilly, um, uphill, downhill. But um, yeah, it's about to push in the right sections. And yeah, the, as you can see, the the variable variability uh, index is 1.07. So the comparison of normalized power to power, um, yeah, which is about yeah 22 watts uh, difference. It's quite high. And um, yeah, as you can see, it's it's more about like it's it's harder because you have a lot of, a lot more a lot more peaks, um, almost like a like a yeah short distance uh, race, uh, drafting race, and uh, yeah, and then the run. Um, I was yeah fifty around fifty seconds slower than last year, but it was uh, way hotter this year than last year. Uh, I had for the 20.89 kilometer course um, an average pace of um, 334 minute per kilometer. The elevation is about 100. It's a yeah, 160 meter elevation um, according to my my Wahoo rival watch. And there the um, wrist heart rate was actually working well, and my average heart rate was 172 beats per minute. Um, I know I can go higher, but um, yeah, probably um, because of the, the the hard bike before, um, I was probably a little little empty, and also with the heat, um, yeah, not, wasn't absorbing the the carbs too well, and um, yeah, but it still was a solid run for the heat, and yeah, I could uh, defend the lead and bring home uh, the win, so uh, yeah. That's that's all, all which all which counts. Doesn't matter the runtime, but um, I can't wait to, um, yeah, once have a like a nice fast flat uh, half marathon course um, off the bike 
where I can really show that I'm able to run like a yeah, 110 or even under because I know that I can but either the course is really hard and uh, or it's really hot and <laughs> it's usually like uh, it's always something like that but um, yeah I think my running is, is, is for sure something uh, I really have to imp improve yet the most um, compared to the, to the best guys in the world but um, I think I'm also like a little underestimated there and I can actually run. The only reason I'm usually not running that far as fast is because I'm riding really hard because on the bike you can just like, if you're riding a little harder, you can just have a bigger gap than if you're like just running a little harder. Um, it's simple as that. The bike uh, is just the biggest portion of the, of the 70.3 distance and counts the most and I think um, a lot of guys are just getting a little too comfortable, um, yeah, in their in their in the race uh, and just sitting in bike groups, not pushing, even though they could, and just resting for the run. And yeah, but why uh, should I? When I know when I'm resting in the group, there's always someone probably running faster. But uh, if I want to win, I have to, uh, yeah play my play my cards well uh, which is definitely um, my bi one my bike strength and um, yeah that's my opinion about that and so overall a really solid um, performance um, now that I was beating actually two guys uh, from the um, top 10 of the PTO world ranking I'm also quite hopeful that um, there will be uh, some some good PTO points for that race um, it's which uh, yeah puts me like a little high in the high in the ranking again after I lost really some some positions uh, of course after like all, all the Ironmans especially the Ironman World Championship uh, in St. George as I'm not doing uh, full distance yet so um, yeah that's uh, that's the about the, the data uh, if you're inter interested in any more uh, details um, about the data of course uh, you can um, just comment under this video, um, write me on Instagram or just check out my, my Strava files. Um, I just published everything there also from the race and uh, yeah, the hashtag no secrets, there you can see see everything. A lot of you guys um, in, in road. Um, I'm gonna be there on, on Friday on, on the expo and um, have have some events like yeah easy morning run with compress sport and uh, also like a meet and greet uh, at the compress sport booth um, just check out my my instagram for all the that additional information uh, if you want to to meet me um, i would be happy to meet you and um, yeah and then next race uh, is the pto canadian open um, in edmonton in july um, i'm really excited for that um, gonna be a really big one against some yeah one yeah world class field <laughs> it's more or less uh, yeah kind of kind of world champs um, big prize money on the line and um, I hope I can um, yeah show my performance um, what I did yesterday at Change Vice I hope I can show it there and I'm sure then I definitely I will definitely have a, a great race and yes. Um, I hope you hope you enjoyed the video. Of course, as always, don't forget to uh, comment, like, and subscribe. And thanks a lot, everyone, for your support. Cheers.